pretty good lead in music. Yeah, that's it. It's too high. Guy's gonna open up and zap me to my bones. What's up, Andy? Hey, Pete. <laughs> well, all right, here we are. I'm interested to hear about how this happened. Alright. I just that song just gets me. I don't know. It's like that karma thunderbolt coming to get you. Welcome once again. These are coming out quickly now. We're in uh, our episode three, recording three of Big Talk from the Little House, and we're here today with Andy Pollock. Dear friend of mine for many, many years, a local psychologist and therapist and connoisseur of improvisational music. Andy, how are you today? Doing great, Pete. Man, um, <laughs> I, as, you, as you were talking, I was going back in history thinking about our, you know, our initial moment of recognition that we were meant to be doing something together. <laughs> and it's... It's been quite a few years since that moment, but do you remember that? Like, you had worked at Grove, and then there was maybe like eight, ten years later, I ran into you, and we, we talked, mm -hmm. and I ran to you again. He was at the post office, and I said to myself, if I see him again, I mean, I haven't seen this guy in ten years, and I've seen him twice in like two days. Right. If I see him <clears> again, like I need another sign. We're meant to be doing something together, and literally... It was like two or three days later, we ran into each other. Again. Right, right. Serendipity would have it that we were supposed to come together, but it wasn't for you the You brought original. me up to the barn. I was like, I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Andy Pollack <clears throat> and I have been doing um, different activities and programs together in uh, the local community for quite some time. And I'm, I'm to say I'm excited that Andy's here today to open up a conversation would be an understatement. Um, but I do want to just jump right into it because... Uh, of the, the way the way uh, our conversations seem to go um, can typically, if I can get myself out of my own way, are usually pretty enlightening. So, Andy, um, I want to start off. Andy's here to talk about a few different things, maybe, maybe not. But one of uh, one of the things um, that he is here to talk about is one of the things that hooked me in the beginning was tapping. Um, I'd like to start with the tapping. Oh, you would. Okay, yeah. I thought we were going to the, the trauma room. <laughs> I want to hear a little bit about some of the techniques that you use in your therapy to help people to um, eliminate or to step back from trauma and to get more in control of their own lives. And I think tapping was one of the first things yeah. that EFT. was super interesting to me. Yeah. Um, EFT or, or tapping is um, it's um, it's been considered in, in essence like. Of acupuncture without the needles. That's one way that people look at it because you're what you're doing is you're tapping on these energetic points and um, I'm at a loss for words. The um, electrical fields that travel through our body and there's a word for it that's escaped my mind. But meridians. Yeah, thank you. When 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 we get stressed, um, when we're holding on to energy that's unexpressed, it does get trapped in different parts of our body, mm -hmm. and so. What tapping does, um, and the tapping points, for the purposes of at least getting started, are all generally on the face and upper body. And so what you're, what you're doing, and, and I just I want to say like as kind of a foundation to this, that as humans in this world, um, you know, we need, we need foundations, uh, something that's foundational where we can come back to and know that we may be pushed and pulled and... Um, you know, in, in a storm, but we have something that's uh, on board for us to be able to um, access and find 
a steady state of balance, which is what we all, as an organism and human beings, want to strive for. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we're all kind of like at times it feels like in panic attacks. You can get like I used to be claustrophobic um, when I was a kid. I was, I played hide and seek with my dog. I must have been eleven years old, and I had a dog named Oreo, and I would throw the ball. And she would go run and get it, and then I would hide in a new place each time. Well, this one time I threw the ball. Did you get locked? I got locked in my dad's oh trunk my of his car, and it was a Volkswagen Rabbit had a hatchback, and I got in it, and it went boom, and it closed on me. Well, long story short, I just I figured out pretty quickly I couldn't get out. I was stuck. I couldn't. There's no safety latch. I was like in I'm this trapped. little compartment, I'm and, it, and and my mom was at work, and I was I you know my dad was up in his office, which was like you know other side of the house, three Hopefully floors. It wasn't up. like 120 degrees out. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I mean, the, you know, the, the the quick version of the story is is I was yelling at the top of my lungs for. Um, what felt like forever, but it was probably about 10 minutes. But that's like 10 years when you're trapped yeah, in a claustrophobic exactly. container. So on the, my last very loud yell, help, my dad goes, opened up the trunk of the car. And I was like, oh, my voice was like bleeding. I was yelling so much. He's like, what are you doing in here? So I said I was embarrassed and I just got out of the car. I'm like, oh, nothing. Thank you. But I was like traumatized. Yeah. So up until... I think it was my late 20s was I, I couldn't go in the closets. The bathroom door would shut. And I'd be like, make sure it didn't lock okay, behind you, me. You just segued us <laughs> right into the world of trauma. That was beautiful. Thank you. So um, yeah. I, I, I want to talk about tapping too. Mm. But but that's what happens in trauma is, is exactly that. And it's not just the experience. It's, it's what we take away from that experience mm -hmm. to believe about ourselves or the world. In that case, it's like I'm unsafe or I'm, I'm, I'm trapped. And so... What when you down the line find yourself could be in an elevator, could be in a stairwell, could be any place where in the moment there's a sense of being trapped. What what happens is this all this information gets recalled because it's stored in our body. And the problem with trauma, and I'm, I say this as a trauma therapist now, I, I I until I was trained with a certain skill that I'll mention in a minute, I found I was totally ineffective with dealing with things like this. Because you can talk about it. You can understand it fully. This is why you know. You know fully why that happened. Mm -hmm. In insight-oriented therapy, which is talk therapy, once you kind of feel, oh, that's why it happens, it can tend to alleviate the with the the the, the symptom. With trauma, though, that's, that's not the case. Oh, you get it and... It still happens. Yeah, um, it, it was a panic. I mean, it was a full-on panic attack for me yeah. where I was like, there's no way I can I can uh, go into that. Cl I wouldn't go into elevators. I mean, elevators would freak me out, and I'd make my cl clammy hands. My lungs would get tight. Yeah. But uh, you know how I ended up eating it? I don't know if this was, you know, this was a natural thing, but... Um, it does happen. Well, it, it, you know, I was forced to be put into a claustrophobic situation in my 20s, and I had to go through this situation. Ooh. And uh, it was it was I was in New Zealand of all places, and we were going splunking, cave diving. And I'm like, sure, I'll do that. And I was the oldest guy on the bus. I was like 28 years old. And everybody else was from oh all over God. the world on this bus, Kiwi Express, and they were all in their late, late teens and early 20s. And so I was kind of like the leader, big you know, big 28 year old oh. from America, and and it was you know. You have. So anyway, they're like, oh, but let's go do the cave diving. So I got, we got on these eight millimeter suits or nine millimeter, six millimeter suits, whatever, the thick rubber so you don't get cold yeah. because you're going in an underground spring. So you practice jumping off of a bridge with a with an inner tube on with a little helmet and one candle. And I'm like, what's this going to do? So we're all jumping off and practicing and jumping off and practicing. Oh. And then finally, we, we get in the bus, and it drives us all over with our wetsuits and our big inner tubes because we're practice jumping into a, a river because un, in the when you go into this cave, there's a river underground, so you have to jump off of a ledge into this river that leads you into the center of the mountain, right? And you come Whoa. out the other side. So I hey, had no talk idea. About, talk about facing your <laughs> darkest fear. Holy shit. Yeah, so I had no I had no choice but to get through it. So wow. we get here's the moment of truth, right? I get to the cave entrance and it's a huge mountain on the on you know with a hole like it looked like um it looked like something like uh, like the bat cave. Remember the old bat cave yeah, where they yeah, drive yeah. into the so it was a hole, like an igloo on the side of this mountain. So we all go in, I go first, and as I start to walk in, I realize it's a cave about as big as this room, right? Oh. It's about, you know, the ceilings are about 10 feet, not even seven, eight feet high, just a little above my head. And it was about 
to a 24 foot room circle. Really it was, yeah. <laughs> and then in the cave, there was another hole, even smaller, that you had to go into to get into the river, right? So I get in there first, and I, and there's no way you more than one person can come through the hole at the time. So I start to panic. Oh, so that, that was the point where right there when you realized you had to yeah, go yeah, into yeah, that. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. So I start to panic. I said, whoa, 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 stop. There's only like six people behind me. And I'm like, I got to get out. I got to get out. You got to let me out. So they, they let me. because oh, everybody's backing up. Like, what's the matter with the big guy? He can't, you know, he's not. So they let me out. <clears throat> and I get outside and I tell the, the Kiwi cave dive guide. I said, I don't think I can do this. He said, oh, don't worry, Mike. He says, well, you come in last. Maybe you get a better breath that way. He says, if you don't have to go in it, you can go back with the truck and meet us around the other side of the mountain so uh, i said all right well, let me try going in last so i go in last and now everybody's one candle power helmet light is in a circle there's probably 20 of us in a circle in a room very small like this and then those one candle powers lit it up just enough where your eyes would adjust because it was very bright outside and very dark inside and then you could see the whole room so then from there we, he said, now we're going to go into that hole right there. And it was literally like a doghouse hole with our inner tubes just fit through. You skid them through and you get to this ledge. <clears throat> and on the ledge, there's a uh, probably an eight foot, 10 foot drop, like from a basketball hoop down, where you have to turn around backwards, hold the, the inner tube on your waist and jump back into the water and then splash. And then you're in the wow. water. Wow. So needless wow. to say, I got about, once I got to that point, I surrendered. Because it's like, there was no going back once you jump off the cliff. So I was like, well, whoa, 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 and oh, then it released. God. So that was my story. That's one way of dealing with the trauma. You, so you, now when you walk into an elevator or go into a closed space. Yeah, it, not as bad. Wow. It's not as bad. Wow. But wonder if you can't get to a cave in New Zealand. There's all the techniques, and this is what the tapping does, right? It's 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 a way to bring you your sensory awareness back into the body and yeah. out of the perceived. You threat. think of it, think of it as like okay, there are these energy pathways that that go through our bodies, and when we experience stress or or emotional disease, um, in our bodies, what happens is these these pathways can get blocked because of our tension. So think of it as like. A hose that's kinked. The tapping allows that hose to be unkinked and the energy to flow freely, you know. And so, um, by tapping on these meridian points and simultaneously, there's a scripted format, which is you know anybody can use. It's it's I mean you, you, you it's like playing Mad Libs, you know. You plug in you you plug in the the first the first piece of it is. Um, um, even though I have whatever the problem is, even though I have all this anxiety and stress and tension, so you're, you're, you're stating what you have and then where it is in your body. So even though I have all the stress, anxiety, and tension and feel it in my breath and my heart is racing, mm -hmm. um, and then whatever it is that, you know, basically then I deeply and completely accept and forgive myself. You say that three times, while you begin to tap, and it's called the karate chop point. It's just, you can see the, it's basically this point right here. And you say that three times. It's the only time you say that in the whole cycle. Hmm. Even though I have all this anxiety and stress and overwhelm and I feel it in my heart and I feel like I'm going to probably die, I deeply, completely accept and forgive myself. Three times. Would that be any any? Would that be in any way similar to the Polynesian practice of ho'oponopono? You know, yeah, absolutely. I, I, anything that you say... That um, it's like, I, okay, I did this with my mom once, and she was experiencing all sorts of physical symptoms. She thought she was going to die. Um, she had been to doctors and at least six or seven different doctors. They couldn't figure out what it, what it was. And um, I took a ride down to Jersey with my wife to just see if there was anything we could do. And I did it. I did tapping with her around this. And it was around this pain in her stomach. And basically when you set up the script for it, what you're doing is you're you're basically saying what what I just said. You always start with that always start with that opening statement three times, and then you're 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 saying all these things that okay at one point in in saying these so, so it's like okay all this tension all this tension in my body, and with my mom I, you know there was this fear that she was gonna die, so she said Do you want me to say that. I said, well, 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 yeah, because if, if it's in there, and this is back to your point that you just, it, if the thought is in there, unexpressed, mm -hmm. what, 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 you know, so, so it's basically, 
saying the things that are difficult to say, and, and yeah, I feel like I'm, I might I might die. Uh, I did a couple rounds with her. When I say a round, and I'll, I'll explain it in a moment if we have time, like you go through each having point as you're saying, all this tension and stress, I can't, re I can't relieve it, I feel like I'm gonna die. Um, and you get back to the last point, you take a breath and you kind of reassess where you're at. But with my mother, after two rounds, she broke down and just started bawling. She, she The just, breakthroughs are where it's at. Just, I love the breakthroughs. She just breakthrough. cried her. She's, and she, in the middle of just crying, she said, I have felt like I've needed to cry. I've been unable to cry for, for months. She finished crying. She stood up. She felt around her stomach. And she looked at me. She said, it's gone. Huh. It's gone. Could it be gone? I said, Could be. Well, we'll see. That was it. And it was the release of all this energy. That's the only way I can look at it. And, and the release in emotion and crying um, gave her that. So the great thing about EFT or tapping is you could use it for a variety of things. People who you could use it for anxiety. You may have a meeting you're going into that you're stressed out about. Um, when you apply the formula and the steps, it's it's you you can use it over and over again for various different situations. So is it safe to say that people are basically getting trapped <clears throat> in what they perceive to be their reality? Is this the emotional trap that happens because the intellect is just so strong, yeah. saying this is what it is, this is what it is, and the and the heart saying no, it's not that at all. But the the intellect is so strong that it keeps everything in a in a dysfunctional track or direction. Yeah, it it redirects the energy um, to to. Where it needs to go, and and yeah, no, I think that's a good way to that's a good way to um, conceptualize it, um, which is similar with with um, with trauma, you know. Um, yeah, it's it's. Um, so we spoke about earlier about the condor and the eagle, right? And this was yeah, this was that something. That was Don Alber Alberto Taxo. Yeah, Don Alberto Taxo. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the teachings of the teachings of Ushai, right? Yeah. And he taught he spoke about the eagle and the condor. And what's the eagle and which is the condor? The, the eagle, I think, is our, our Western thinking culture. And and the condor is more indigenous, um, um, you know, um, earth-based culture. Um, and so, you know, our technical technological based system and our Basically, there needs to be a balance, is what he's saying, between the two. Because we've gotten, the way I understand it, and from the different teachings that I've been exposed to, we, have as a species, have grown too intellectual. We're too trying to fit what they're, you know, the, the television set's telling us we should do. Shh. Time to take a vacation. Time to go back to work now, you know, and we're all, like, becoming these automatrons, I call it. Yeah. Where we're doing what we're programmed to do. But these indigenous teachings, and the reason why I think we're friends... One of the key reasons besides music and you're an awesome guy is because of your focus on how this brain is potentially fidgeting with our spiritual development, which I believe is a huge part of uh, what we're missing as a yes. species. Yeah, Pete, you nailed it. And, and I, you know, I've, I've watched you deconstruct this for help, help people deconstruct this for years in the, in the happy club meetings um, um, with, with both the music um, and the talks you've given. Um, it's it's you know helping people kind of navigate through um, what again what we and you're, but you're right what we do intellectually mm -hmm. up in our heads um, um, you know we how long, how long have we talked about like disengaging from the intellect you know well it's part of it the intellect's important to make sure we can cross the street without getting hit by a car it's yeah. important to tell us when it's time to go to sleep or eat we're hungry but much past that being keeping us safe I think yeah. it's overused yeah exactly. Exactly. So that's so. Then there's another thing I want to touch on before we move through sure. it is the um, is uh, um, the healing trauma EMDR. Can you give us a little info, a yeah. little, little run through on that work that you've been doing and having some great success with? I've heard. Yeah, EMDR stands for it's a, it's a eye movement desensitization reprocessing therapy, um, and basically people that have been traumatized, um, and there's a lot of people. There's a lot of traumatized people out there. Um, one of the, one of the things I'm passionate about now is like getting the word out to people that there's help. Um, trauma is a very strange animal, um, and talk therapy 
intellectualizing, understanding it is irrelevant. Um, you can understand all the aspects of your trauma and the symptoms are still there. And these are really debilitating symptoms for people. Um, um, very painful, very painful memories. Trauma is stored differently in the brain than a normal memory. When someone's traumatized, um, well, let's just put it this way. Um, what we, what the kind of memory that we're shooting for is called an integrated memory. It's like if I said to you, Pete, um, the wheels on the bus go round and, <laughs> and round, round, and round and round. Yeah. That piece of information was an integrated piece of memory stored somewhere in the back of your brain. It's not affecting you in any way. It's there. You can pull it out. You can put it back. Um, a traumatic memory is a full-blown sensory state surround sound memory. It is like you're there. You're feeling it physically. You're reliving it emotionally. The panic that was, you know, you're shaking your head because you, you know from your experience. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's a memory that because of the way the brain stores it, we don't have the ability to adaptively process it. And this is the part where you told me that we're not looking at it in our eye, mind's eye. So, so, right. the, so uh, this is the part I love about what you told me about this. Go ahead. Yeah, we, we, um, we do not have the ability to adaptively, like even terrible memories, something happened, okay, um, you go through a divorce, a breakup, um, um, you know. Murder, it could be. Yeah. Well, well, no, no. These are like, if, if what, what I'm saying is even a normal bad memory, a breakup mm -hmm. or, you know, someone dies, assuming you didn't see it, over time, we can generally see a bigger. decline in the intensity, okay. a decline, yeah, because we, we process through it. We, we, we sleep, we dream, we talk. Um, with a traumatic memory... We do not have the ability to adaptively process it like that. Got it. And so talking about it, understanding it, intellectually, does absolutely nothing. And I found that out. I was about 15 years into my practice. And I was getting people who had trauma. And I, I felt totally ineffective. I was not helping these people. In fact, it may be making it worse because, you know, we're talking about it, talking about it. It's just stirring up the mud and just clouding them up again. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I, I had to. I had to. Um, um, actually, I, I didn't. I wasn't seeking it out, but I came across this thing called EMDR, where you magically wave your hands in front of someone's eyes and their trauma disappears. And I was like, Yeah, right. Sure. Yeah. Um, but the more I started reading it, I got hooked in, and I actually ordered the textbook, and I'm, um, and it was a huge volume um, written by Francine Shapiro, who was a woman who came up with it, actually, when she was diagnosed with cancer. She got diagnosed, that was a trauma, and she realized, after leaving the doctor's office and looking up at birds on a telephone wire and her eyes moving, that she felt some strange sense of relief and mm. developed it from that. Mm. Um, she, um, so I started reading about it, and I got, I got hooked in. I read this textbook mm -hmm. cover to cover, and I'm kind of embarrassed to say, but I, you know, throughout my entire college career, Career. I don't think I. I ever. I read the parts I needed to read in a textbook, but yeah. never did it actually hook me in like a novel. Or and I thought if this is real, this is the real deal. And right. I went to San Francisco to train with Francine Shapiro, um, which I feel blessed to do because she's since passed. God rest her soul. She's left behind a real legacy that's helping millions of people. Wow. EMDR is the number one most effective therapy for dealing with trauma and complicated trauma. So. Um, that's that's EMDR, but there's there's a whole eight phase process that could be a whole other that could be a whole other show. But yeah, I, I can I can tell you more about it. But basically, what you're focusing. Do you want me to go through the? Do you do you want to do do you want to do you feel? I, I I'll do whatever. You, yeah, absolutely. Sure. All can, right. Let's I give can, us a little. Bit. Maybe we can try it try it at uh and where we're sitting right now watching this. So if we had a tra if we have a past trauma or something that a breakup or something that we feel that we're hung up on, maybe we can let's try that right now. Go ahead, let's let's do a little demo. Yeah, that's why I, I want to get the work out to people that there's help for this because <clears throat> people suffer for years. And when we have trauma and we're in that much pain, what we do to try to avoid that pain can become a whole other set of issues. Um, you can run, but you can't hide from this stuff. And that's yep. By the time people get to me, I think that's what they realize because nobody would want to do this. 
if they didn't have to. Mm-hmm. It's like surgery. Yeah. Would you get a surgery if you didn't absolutely know you needed it? Yeah, or a root canal, right? Right. Yeah, right. Let's leave the tooth in. Well, <laughs> <laughs> people do decide to do that. Yeah. Um, because of the the, the fear and, and the, the belief that it's it's. So it's a physio it's a it's a physiological thing, right? Because when we start to look, I remember when you explained it to me a, a month ago or so. It's getting the person to remember a different path because when we're stuck in your brain like right behind your eyes you're locked in yeah. on a particular remembrance yeah it's, it's, <clears throat> whereas if you start moving the eyes and you move you follow the finger as you go into the trauma you start to dissolve it is that yeah, correct? So what I, yeah yeah <clears throat> um for a number of reasons you know i i don't want to get too deeply into the like physio what happens physiologically um but it is like like REM sleep, right? When we mm. sleep and we dream and all right, it's uh, you know it's called bilateral stimulation. But what's interesting is when you're treating somebody um, with EMDR, um, let's just say they have problems with their their eyes, they hurt when they move or whatever. You, there's a number of other ways that you can do it with sound, sound that goes from ear to ear. I have headphones I can put on people. Mm. They can put their own music on. You could do it with tapping, one one side of the body to the other. You know, I could sit there and tap on, you know, just above your knee on that leg and above your knee on that leg and go back and forth. Um, so for people who are deaf or people who are blind, or it 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 still amazingly works. I I've only done it with the eyes, but it can be done otherwise. It feels like it's like it's a direct it's a direct experience of taking the person out of their thoughts and putting them into the body. Yeah, right? because what happens is the, the way the information gets stored, um, we start with we start by the way with image. And when I ask people for image, I'm asking them to recall the most disturbing an image that represents the most disturbing part of what's happened. And more often than not people no, right away. Yeah, it was that. It was that moment. Um, to give some examples, well, should I give examples? I don't. I don't want to be too too well, graphic. You, but you can be vague. You can be okay. vague. Um, somebody who's trying to resuscitate somebody else mm-hmm. and gets to the point where they realize that this person has passed. Okay. Um, the moment of realization. So it's that image. First of all, like, who wants to go there? Nobody does. And what we do to avoid it becomes yeah, another block, problem. Block that out mm-hmm. kind of thing. We're not talking about that. So we go to that image that represents the most disturbing part. And then we pull from that. We extract from that what's called a negative cognition. And a negative cognition is what you've taken away from that to believe about yourself or the world. And I could have done better. I should have saved them. That was my fault. Yeah. I'm powerless. Okay. So it's, yeah, it's my fault. I'm, you know. Um, and so that's a piece that we're working on because that becomes part of that person. You know, I've worked with people who have been physically abused, and and what often comes along with that is I'm powerless. Mm -hmm. And what is true is that in this situation, you may have been, Mm. but it becomes generalized. And now when in a situation where others may assert a boundary or say no or, or do something to protect themselves, people who are already in the mode of this powerlessness is part of me, freeze usually or somehow it happens again Mm -hmm. reinforcing the powerlessness wow um so it can really become embedded so we go after that piece so they identify the negative cognition the negative cognition is identified and then i ask them what they'd like to believe that's called the positive cognition I'd, i'd like to believe that um that situation doesn't define me or i'd like to believe um Whatever it is. And then, so that's, that's, the, that's the second piece. The third piece is they evaluate how much they actually believe that positive cognition. I'd like to believe, you know, that doesn't define me. How much do you actually well, it, believe that? It helps to self-analyze, too. If you start, you know, we're always, I feel like people are going around in their everyday lives and judging, you know, this person did this and that person's doing it that way. And one of the things I remember um, Ellis Bradley brought up to the Hill 20 years ago is he would say the phrase, no judgments, no judgments. And I was always kind of like, that sounds like a hippie thing to be saying, you know, hippie. And I wouldn't quite understand what he what he meant until I started understanding these teachings yeah. that, you know, when we're judging someone else, like, oh, Who they're are we just, really seeing? We're judging ourselves, right? <laughs> so it's Amen. like, it's better to put ourselves into a neutral perspective where 
as you can see yourself, your own avatar, yeah. playing its story, which is only a story. And then you're able to kind of get a, a higher uh, view of the potential bigger picture rather than being exactly. so encapsulated yeah. in the body. And, and you may actually get something for yourself. Because when I am in a situation where somebody's actions or behavior are getting under my skin, I take note and I write down a few adjectives that describe what it is about them that pisses me off yeah. or that upsets me or whatever. And then I look at those words and I say, okay, where are these in me? And now the first reaction is always like, that's not in me, that's them. Now you got to find it in yourself. When you find it in yourself, not to define you, it may have been a time, way back in time, um, somebody, I, I, I did this exercise with the, the staff that I, that, that I work with where, you know, Working with kids, you can get really frustrated with them. Pick a kid who gets you really frustrated and you have no patience for. Write down some adjectives about them and then look at them and see how they apply to you. And I remember this one gym teacher, all of a sudden I heard, oh, shit. And I walked over and he was like, lazy. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, I was the laziest of lazy. <laughs> when I see lazy, I see red. And he was just like, oh, my God. And realizing that... Was he calling you lazy? No, no. He, it, was, it was the adjective to describe the kid. It was the laziness ah, of the kid that was okay. aggravating him. And he's looking Got at himself it. going, I was, I've had to overcome lazy. <laughs> that doesn't define me now. So it's, it's that. And when, when we can find it in ourselves, <laughs> mm -hmm. this is the beautiful part mm -hmm. of this. When we can find it in ourselves and own it and have compassion for it, we have compassion for it out there. Yeah. We see it and we're compassionate about it as opposed to judging. I mean, the world needs We more. have to find it in ourselves. We have to, we have to, it's, it's like, you know, the people call it shadow work. There's a lot of different names for it, but it's finding those aspects that we project, owning them and therefore building greater compassion. It just seems to be a more uh, effective way to pilot yourself rather than going around bumping into things and blaming people, you know, I mean, yeah. and we, we, we all have, you know, a, a role to play. So I think yeah. if, the more well aware said. we can be of ourselves, the more effective we can be in not only uh, appreciating our own life, but to help, you know, others with the, what they're stuck with as well. Yeah, absolutely. We need, we, we need, we need more compassion. It, it, it that's, that, it, I'd rather put compassion into the, the field than, than judgment. And... So I want to just get back, get back to the, the next step of the EMDR, or do we want to come, come back to that in another episode? Well, you know what? We are because we, do, we are coming up to a break in the program, but I do want to... Can we, can we, can we save some e Absolutely. EMDR for the, we'll, for the next class? But I do want we'll to end it, it as a cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah, I want, to end it on a, uh, I want to end it on a question that we were talking about earlier about the most important word that is in... That with the word we were talking about about the uh, what's the most powerful word in the well it's yeah it's, it's the the, um, the 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 highest frequency strangely. frequency that's what you were what saying we, what we would have you know, thought was love um, and um, and the highest frequency is not love they according to who, who where, where's this well it was it was, it was uh, there, there was these, these experiments done in Germany in this okay. this dome that would somehow be able to, and I, I, again, I'm going to sound like an idiot here because I don't have all the facts, but I, I have enough facts with it where sure, basically yeah. it it, um, it it emit it picks up the frequency of different emotions, and and um, not exactly how I don't know. But, this is dovetailing on on uh, heart math as well, which is another subject we will visit with you in the future. Yeah, yeah. And why, why is the word escaping me? That's really weird. Authenticity. Yeah, that it blew my mind. So the word is the authenticity. most authenticity. Authenticity puts off the highest frequency. That's that's to me. That's about speaking from the heart. You know, speaking from the heart. Speaking with 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 emotion. When people are vulnerable and they're sharing their emotion and 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 real um, and and being it, it it's it's um, it's it's. Yeah, it's, it's it a valid. A it's a, it yeah. seems to be a valid, a tangible, valid, uh, validating characteristic. <clears throat> and I think that's what people, I mean, ultimately want to feel is accepted and connected. And connected. You know, yeah, we're we're meant to be connected, and and that's a that's perfect a whole. That's that's a whole other. That's a perfect place to transition. So I want to thank you, Andy, for coming and being authentic today. I love you, man. You thank know, you. Because this is the beginning uh, is... of a beautiful friendship. Well, you have, I'm just so excited. I just have to throw this back to you because what Pete has manifested here is just incredible. And I'm blown away by his tenacity, ability to plan, ability to, to manifest, 
Um, I have to say that, Pima, and I'm, I'm honored to be here, and, and I can't wait to see what this becomes. No, it's a true blessing, and I feel the same way about you, my brother. Brother from another mother. Brother from another mother. I mean, to say that the entire time. <laughs> with, with, with complete authenticity, I want to say thank you very much for tuning in again if you made it this far, and uh, you're starting to get a peek into what we're going to be talking about here um, in Big House, uh, Big Talk from the Little House. So thanks again, Andy. Appreciate it. Any final words that you'd like to Yeah, if to? you want to find out more about trauma and trauma treatment, go to the, um, there's, there's a website, EMDRIA, it's an international, you can just look up, or just look up EMDR Institute, um, and you'll be able to find a person who does this EMDR therapy um, in your area. EMDRinstitute.org, I believe it is, but you'll find it. All right, there you go. Thank There's you help. again. Thank you, thank Andy. You, um, and thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in again. And uh, we hope that uh, we will see you again next week. And Sequoia True Blood would say, uh, Onagiwahi, which means in Choctaw, we are always together. So thank we're you again. Together. We're always together, brother. <laughs> Signing off. Have a good one.